Very good. So, I'm John Tarrant. This is Byron Katie. Yeah. This is Stephen Mitchell. <laughs> and we are, we're going we're gonna to start, our starting point is this book, which is, um, are we on video? We're not yes. on video. We are. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Our starting point <laughs> is this book. <laughs> and uh, it's called A Mind at Home with Itself, and it's Byron Katie and Stephen Mitchell. And the, uh, we'll have Stephen talk about, a little bit about it. Um, the, the, the general notion is that Stephen translates great ancient wisdom texts. Mm -hmm. And particularly, he was well known for the Tao Te Ching, which is what set him off on this path. <laughs> and uh, and he, he makes them accessible. And so he's done this with the Diamond Sutra, which is an ancient Buddhist text. And he's put it, put it in language that, you know, makes sense to us and is not full of special ancient Chinese terms. And then the other thing is that Katie, uh, Stephen, reads these, this material to Katie, who then mm -hmm. responds and riffs and they play together. So Katie and Stephen get to play and Katie gets to play with the old Zen consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it, it also shows you know, the links between the work that Katie's developed and the Dharma. And so Katie's somebody who had a, an, you know, is recorded in Loving What Is, but somewhat in this book too, the, a, a spontaneous awakening. And, and it turned out in the long run to have a lot, a lot of things in common with Buddhism, but she developed her own, or with Zen actually, I, I suppose, and she, Katie developed her own way of expressing this in four questions and a turnaround. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so on. questioning our assumptions, you know. Great. Just and so, Deconstructing your th thought forms and your m what your mind's believing is a big thing in Cohen work too. And I, I'm a Cohen teacher and founder of Pacific Zen Institute, which is devoted to creating culture around Cohen's and con transformation that way. So I've always been interested in Katie's work mm -hmm. and have benefited from it. And so and and so let's start maybe maybe and the, I have lots of comments and questions and we're going to have a dialogue and a conversation mm -hmm. and have some fun. Okay, did you want to say anything to start? Um, no, I'm just um, always mesmerized by whatever comes out of your mouth. And, Me too, yeah. And, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah we both get to meet it at the no, same no, no. time. You're right. That's like, right. We both get to discover what we're saying. <laughs> and so what was the question? <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Like, it, no, you know, what, what I would like to say is, you know, what a privilege it is to sit here between the two of you, and that's pretty awesome and um, and um, how much I appreciated getting in touch with um, this Diamond Sutra it was as Stephen would read me a chapter of his translation of the actually that's what it is and he would read me a chapter and then ask me to respond and every time it would be, I wouldn't change one word of that. I wouldn't add anything or subtract anything from that text of value. And he kept assuring me that, yes, you know, go ahead, just just respond. And then he would he would get questions. He would he would ask me questions that would encourage me to respond. And um, that, um, it was. Um, it was um, just a beautiful experience, a beautiful experience. And then Stephen, Stephen um, writes down what I say, and then he, he um, shapes it in his beautiful way. And so that is, you know, that's, you know, a mind at home with itself. It's beautiful. It's like a conversation about the deepest things is a sacred thing. It's wonderful, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and so that's an endlessly fascinating exploration, I think. And so, so, uh, Stephen, did you want to come in about like why the Diamond <coughs> Sutra and you know that kind of thing? Like, yeah. Um, what's interesting to you about that? Uh, 
the Diamond Sutra for me is is one of the most profound spiritual texts that we have, and uh, I've also felt for a long time, ever since I began Zen practice, uh, that it was the versions into English that I saw were were pretty impossible to read, and I've known a lot of people who've had the same experience. So eventually. Uh, a few years ago, I sat down one day and, and said to myself, let's see if I can do any better uh, about making this amazing text accessible to people. And uh, I don't know Sanskrit, so it's not a translation. It's, a, it's a, an adaptation that I put together from uh, starting from literal scholarly translations. And my intent was to make it transparent so that the Buddha mind could shine through without having any uh, scholarly impediments or any metaphysical impediments, make it all extremely accessible here and now and, and radiant as I experienced the original text and, and have since I began Zen practice uh, a long time ago. And, um, and then when I got finished, it occurred to me that um, the best way of um, illuminating it would be to do with Katie what we did with the Tao Te Ching. Um, and in addition to the, having that as a wonderful project, it seemed to me that it would also be the best way of building a bridge between the Dharma community and the community of the work. Uh, because uh, we found that each practice um, enhances the other, that, that for people doing Dharma practice, doing meditation practice, uh, the ability to, to do the work and um, question specific thoughts that are um, causing karmic impediments is a, an enormous benefit to their practice. And meditation practice, uh, in the same way, deepening the stillness and the ability to, to focus is a, a great benefit to people who are doing Katie's work. So that cool. was another uh, intention of mine. Well, thanks. So, um, and did you read, did, you, did Stephen read this to you? Yes, and you chapter by chapter. Yeah. So, okay, so okay. I would... Yeah. So it's more lively that way. Yeah. yeah, and it was, I mean, it was, a, a, as Katie said, a beautiful experience. And then when I... I thought that what she said could be expanded or enhanced, or I saw a direction to point her to which would um, uh, which would illuminate a particular point in a different way that she hadn't uh, gone in a different direction. I would point her there and said, "Why don't you, why don't you say something about such and such?" So, and, and all of this ended up in a bunch of raw material that I. Um, I shaped and, and then we bounced it back and forth in the editing process. That, that's how it was done. So, <laughs> so here we are. That's a very intimate experience you know, to share with ones that you would say mate. Yeah, right, mate. <laughs> yeah, right. What do you really think? <laughs> well, good. So, um, you know, the notion of inquiry is really a big... One of the things we're going to use this book for is to like well, similarities between the Dharma as a transformational process and as a practice and the work as a transformational pr process and as a practice and how you know they can interact and benefit each other and, and I think already have actually um, and so so um, I mean maybe I could get you to say one of the big primary things is like reality is more profound and beautiful than my maps of reality and my thoughts about reality. And, and this is one of, your, you know, one of well, the things uh, I've heard you, you know, say many times. Inquiry is a way to test that over and over and over and over, particularly the way these four questions are set up. And then, and, and then as we meditate on what I call turnarounds, you know, opposites, and as we're dealing you know, assumption by assumption, in other words, we're dealing with the map, we're specifically identifying the map. We're 
um, we would find a, um, a particular time and place where we have experienced, you know, let's say suffering, and, and, and just close our eyes, meditate on that time and place, and um, identify what that map is. And in other words, identify what I'm thinking and believing, and then just put that on paper. And then, you know, let's say, for example, um, um, he, something terrible is going to happen to him. Then I would uh, just meditate on that first question of the four, is it true? And I would be in that time and place where I was thinking and believing that, and just meditate on he's going to, something terrible is going to happen to him, is it true? And then just witness what I'm shown. And then can I absolutely know that it's true? And then just get still, meditate on that. And then to notice, my, uh, my mind's eye will show me how I reacted, how it felt, what I experienced, my attitude, my actions, what happened when I believed the thought. So I'm meditating on how do I react, what happens when I believe the thought. So I'm just meditating in the center of that time and place, identifying, witnessing. I don't have to guess. You know, it's not these questions aren't something I have to answer. I get still and I'm shown. Just get ask, get still, notice. And it's just shown. And it just it changes that whole as we say past, the way we see it when it occurs again. And then that fourth and last question, in that time and place, just sitting in, who, what would I be without the thought in that same situation, time and place? And then just witnessing the difference between reality and what I am thinking and believing about reality. And then that shifts the way I see it everything and I don't have to plan it it's just that I'm more enlightened to mind to mind and then something terrible is going to happen to him I find an opposite some something wonderful is going to happen to him so I'm not just gonna buy that it's not a positive affirmation I'm looking for I'm just going I'm gonna sit in that time and place something wonderful is going to happen to him and I'm either shown in that silence or nothing appears in that side in that silence, but um, so I might try something terrible is going to happen to him. You know something, you know, and maybe that's just it, and that's just it, and then you just notice what else arises, and um, when when it's um, you know when it's you know when it, when you see what you're seeing. You know, and and so you just look for the next assumption or judgment on 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 your paper, and then you meditate on that. And it's something, John, that that we can take with us everywhere we everywhere we go. It's it's like an unceasing meditation. Like I might say, you know, something terrible is going to happen to my son. He he took the car and there's no insurance on it. Something terrible is going to happen to him. And and you know, I'm in that time and place where I was believing it. And and let's see, the phone rings or I'm late for work or whatever it is, I can take is it true with me, you know, all the way until finally it becomes like an implant in our heads. And we're just in a constant un ceasing meditation and it becomes this becomes the whole world not that this is all it just we just start waking up to this is the creator of all of it all the apparent outside that it really is inner and then all of the concepts for some of us that we've heard for years become an etern an, an internal experience not a not um, something we just talk about, but something we have realized and continue to realize and, and expand in. Nice. Yeah, you know, a couple of things come to mind um, here. And one is, um, you know, there's a Zen thing about 
it says, one of the founders of Cohen work in China said, directly pointing to the human mind without reference to words or scriptures, you know. And, uh, and of course, all the scriptures like the Dharma Sutra say that. <laughs> so, so, so there's this special sort of like tumble and dance form happens mm -hmm. when we start talking yeah. about the nature of the mind and so on. And the inquiry into the nature of mind then, I mean, becomes a practice. And, and one of the things you have said that I think is kind of true and fits really well with Zen is the idea that, well, when you're having a thought, there's really nothing wrong with that, but you can be curious whether it's true or not. Yes. Yeah. And so there's a sort of little and question mark happens. Yes, like an yeah, excitement yeah. about it. <coughs> yeah, and it's, it's, it's like... So you're not trying to get rid of it or contradict yeah. it. You're just wondering about it. No, it's just, it's, it's just like everything just ends in a question mark. Everything is just up for, you know, is it true without experiencing the actual words, is it true? It's just that, that open, brilliant mind that is, um, it's, it's, it's a fearless state of mind. You never know where it's going to take you, but uh, without something to stop you, you come to understand and appreciate the true nature of everything. And then the other thing, so, so in a way that's a practice because as soon as I start believing something, <coughs> I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be true because, um, because our thoughts are hypotheses about reality rather than, you know, and so on. So. Yeah. And, and I think that mainly we think we are our thoughts or, I mean, in a naive sense, we think we're our thoughts or we think yeah. the world we've made of our thoughts is something we are compelled to live in or obliged to live in. Or in common decency, I ought to live in the world I was given, or something like that. <laughs> but au contraire, we don't have to live in the world we were given, we can, we can question it. So that's yeah. the and become uh, aware of so much, like, you know, the, the you know, it, it's like I woke up this morning and, um, and went into the kitchen and there was Stephen and we talked and, and What's happening is I'm aware that my, the description is coming out of the images that are showing me a past, and there's nothing real there. There's nothing of substance, meaning you can't touch it, yeah, yeah. you know, for example. So, so eventually we're so awake, it's just, we're just, it's just, this appears to be just a repetition for what's being seen. So is that I? No, not I. And you know that's the past and the future. We're going to have lunch, and I, you know, I just saw that image of the three of us having lunch, and there's such an excitement to that. And and but is that I? No, right, no. Right. present. There's something else present, and and um, whatever we believe that to be, we can question as well, of course, because now is already in the past. So it's you know who am I? So. Inquiry always, you know, it, it gives us opportunity to really understand that the answer to who am I is to understand who we're not. And that ongoing answer affirms what this great text was so, so brilliantly aware of that is, um, um, is um, I mean, how do you, how does nothing speak? itself well this diamond sutra <laughs> nice. the flowers come out of nothing mm. yes. like the universe yes yeah. um, I, I guess I guess I'd be I think it'd be cool to just like get the your your system of inquiry you you do this nice stacked thing a sequence thing with the four questions and so is it so you can you can if you have a thought, sometimes if you, oh, I wonder, and then it, it's not, it somehow manages itself, the mm -hmm. mind manages itself, mm -hmm. but sometimes it doesn't, it thickens and people get, we get panicked or whatever happens. Yeah. You know, and we, or angry or what. Yeah, we, we, <coughs> we, we, get stuck we speak to, to our children in a way that, that we feel guilt over, and guilt is a wonderful way to, to cling to a past, you know, it's the, it's how the ego operates, and but we we say and do things that are against our nature, and then we are just 
you know, in, in that just assured asleepness, unless inquiry meets it as just a natural, you know, every assumption that we're thinking and believing in, and, and you know, the question mark, and, and is it true, and, or just allowing our emotions to show us that we're caught in, in well, well, some me, dream. Let me, let me, if that's okay, let me, um, do with some, some of the, there's a kind of discipline, intricacy, apparent intricacy, but then it becomes very simple, I think, about the inquiry process. Mm -hmm. and, and so it is, is it true? And then you have this rather cool thing where you say, can I really know that it's true? Yeah, can I really know that it's true? And, you know, it gives my, uh, it gives us another, another opportunity to look at it, to see it differently, to test it again, not to be so hasty, to get still. Another thing about the, the discipline, I would I think that you I've often heard you emphasize, and I think is really helpful, is like um, stick to your guns. You know, if you believe this is true, and you're really enraged about it, or upset about it, or grieving about it, then don't like if you go all the way into. You might think theoretically it's a delusion, but until you <coughs> feel it in your body, it, you won't. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to give yeah, you up in some yeah, sense, and so. So, is it true? Yes, it's true. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Where's my proof yes, here yes. in my hand? It's like, yes, yes, this person should be assassinated, whatever yes. it is. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and I'm really passionate about that and I believe it. You know? And then, can I really know that it's true? Actually, is it a way of getting the question mark yet? Yeah, yeah it's moving you back it's, to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. again. To, yeah. It allows you to commit and then question mm -hmm. in a way. So, you know, the, mm -hmm. Then the consequences of holding. A holding a believing. A belief. Like, it w so is it true? Can I really know that it's true? Well, if I believe this, what, what's my life like? What do I do? Yeah. What, how do I treat how people? How do I react? Yeah. And, and, and I can look at my life and see how I react when I believe that. Or I can stay in that one time and place that I'm meditating on and just witness how I reacted and be shown, how I react when I believe the thought. And we begin to see that it, it's not just there. It's as believers, you know, <coughs> believing is um, that false sense of suffering. And the, the really interesting then dance step, like in a way you'll find those questions, not, not as simply put, but you'll find them in a lot of places, you know, that, that they're natural human inquiries. Mm -hmm. And the really interesting... Yeah, nothing, nothing new. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Um, there's no past anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the um, but the then the the th the fourth question you ask is who would I be without that thought, yeah, which is sort of stepping into something strange and and bringing up a whole question of identity. And it seems to me that mm -hmm. stepping into the Zen um, and some of the Tibetan Zogchen and things like that. But the Cohen, that's stepping towards into Cohenville in a way where yeah, suddenly there's really nothing under your feet and it's kind of fun yeah. and much more liberating. It really is what's going on. We're solving a, a koan, you know, a, a, a koan that we ourselves are bringing up and in, into a place and sitting in it to solve it. Well, and you, the who would I be without that? I mean, it's a sneaky way of implying that we make our identity by holding on to things that are often painful to us because we forgot to realize whether we needed, I needed yeah. my me. It, <laughs> so, it, it, can, it, it can take us to that vast, that, yeah, that yeah. vastness. And, and in this practice, you know, I invite people to notice that and then to come back and, and just stay in that time and place. And who would I be in that situation, <coughs> in that moment in time, without the thought? And, the, and I'm seeing a world with nothing put on it, and, and I see how I reacted when I believed into that, and I see cause and effect. I see creation, I see a war, and an assumption, and then the ego making it true as, as its point of survival, and you know, the illusion. And, um, and then I see that it's all a state of mind that has nothing to do with the way that it is.
the way that it is, the way that it is. And it, you know, it's, 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 <coughs> it takes us beyond this world into the world of understanding that is, <laughs> you know, as simple as, oh, I get it, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> and and then next, you know, the the, the next um, the next comes in, and we we either believe our thoughts, and we believe what we think, or we question it. And when we believe, that is this false world that's created. So questioning that solves the koan of creation. Well, um, the um, I it's an to, opportunity. Uh, to yeah, yeah. I want to move into the issue of like embody, embodying that, that, that a good practice allows us in a way to feel what our condition is and feel what it's like to be in the transformation yes. process and in the between of, of where we're going to and stuff. And, and so, and I noticed you said now, I mean, I just heard you say at the beginning of this, in this, in this conversation something about, well, if you ask the question and you just feel it and stay with it, then in a way the answer gets given in a way that was if you just ask and maybe your first thought is your best thought, but sometimes it's what you think you should be thinking and, and yes, it's not really so, it. so yeah. true. Yeah, yeah so we, we're allowing the ego to answer. Yeah, yeah, and, and so it all comes out of the day consciousness and the, the very first superficial thought consciousness. can be the worst thought, yeah. actually, because it's... it's um, it's the identity thought. It's, mm -hmm. it's the part of the story that you've been believing that's causing you s misery for 20 years, for example. So it's an already practiced thought. We've been practicing it in our sleepness. Yeah, yeah. So there's a little bit of an, th that's where it has an off the shelf, like delusion has an off the shelf. Actually, it's the opposite of Tolstoy's thing about all unhappy families are actually the same. All unhappy <laughs> thoughts are the same in some way. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like, like to turn that one <laughs> because but that's you, not you one know, of those I, turn around. I'd like to, <laughs> I'd like to go back to this, but I'd also like to um, pick up on something that you said before about pulling the rug out from under you, um, and connect that with the Diamond Sutra. The, one of oh, the good. brilliant things about that sutra, which I love about Zen too, is um, that it deconstructs everything that it's saying, even the most refined mm. spiritual concept like the non-self, which is, you know, it's basic right. to all forms of Buddhism. It's one of the three characteristics of existence, but it undercuts that too. So it, it's coming from a consciousness that realizes that anything I say, even in the most brilliant, profound way, is a lie. So constantly undercutting itself as it goes along, and the brilliance of that is that um, is that it, it leaves you with with nothing but the truth, and not even that. Surely so not everything. Sure, I mean too. it's extreme. It's, it's radical. Kind of it's more yeah. radical than 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 you can imagine before really getting into it. And then Stephen inviting me to put something into that nothing was. Just like, ah, uh, and and he's saying, oh, you know, it's, this is this is important. It's let's keep going. And this, this is and a monument to to trust. Mm. <laughs> but but you know about pulling that rug out from under you too. It's what the work does. For example, you know, you can uh, answer the first question: Is it true? With a resounding yes, like she betrayed me. Right, right. Is it true? Well, yeah, Hell she yeah. left me, she was having an affair with my she best friend, my you know, friend, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> right, yeah. and, and, then, and then you get a second chance to look at that, maybe for five minutes, maybe for a half hour, with the second question, can you absolutely know maybe, that it's true? Maybe, so you, maybe for yeah, days. Yeah. The brilliance of how this is stacked, as you said, John, is that you can answer both of those with a resounding yes. You're absolutely convinced that it's reality that she betrayed me. And then you get to the third question of cause and effect. How do you react? What happens when you believe that thought? Well, you know, I'm miserable. I'm angry at her. I never want to be with a woman again. I think the world is unfair, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And you can go deeply into the emotional reactions. Um, 
you're you, witnessing things. You're witnessing you're what happens. That silence is you, as, as you, you're shown and, and experience. And you're witnessing, you know, literally cause and effect. You're witnessing karma here in the most mm -hmm. minute, particular way. Then you get to the fourth question, which, as you say, say is, is an amazing question. And you're actually seeing who you are if you didn't believe that she be betrayed you. You're, you're looking at that woman. You're looking at yourself without even the possibility of thinking that if you couldn't even uh, uh, didn't even have the ability to think that thought how would the world look and also so, the compassion you can experience just sitting in 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 that space of just witnessing it's like yours drops in the question and you see this you know this world of believers and the compassion that that we often hear about and it doesn't always happen in, in response to that fourth question, but it's, um, it's so often the case. And, and so it's, we're not exercising, exercising compassion, and we're being compassion. And, and, and that's so much wakes up in us in that silence of, of uh, that fourth question. And it's not, it's not just a mental exercise. It's not just imagining that. It's actually being there, looking into the eyes of that, that woman who betrayed me without the thought. And it's, it's a, uh, an extremely powerful experience. And then, then you talk about it's being stacked. Even after that, turning the thought around, it really experiencing the opposite of the thought. She didn't betray me could be one turnaround. I betrayed her as another. Um, and it takes a lot of courage to sit in, I betrayed her. No, that's not true. OK, and I'm just, we're just meditating on you know, that, that, so that that's situation. That's embodiment thing again. It's because truly embodiment. It is, embodied. <coughs> and I, is it, I betrayed her, <coughs> you know, and it takes a lot of courage sometimes just to sit in yourself and see what's there that or we've I, tried to avoid. You know, that's where how guilt is, is, um, comes into apparent being. And then a third turn, turnaround would be I betrayed myself. I mean, that can open up mm. vistas, of vast vistas of self-awareness. But, but the point is that, you know, even for somebody who is stuck in the thought, yes, it's true, it's absolutely true, she betrayed me at the beginning of the process, gets all these other chances to go deeper with the questioning through the process. And by the time um, he reaches the end of, of uh, the questions and turnarounds, his first answer, yes, it's true, it's absolutely true, can seem ridiculous and so superficial. In other words, um, it's, it's brilliantly constructed so that we have um, many opportunities to go as deep as we want to or as we can at a particular point. We often go in um, so attached. And as you say, if we, you know, the answer is yes. Is it, is it true? Yes. Can I absolutely know that it's true? Yes. And, and before, I res before I come to that conclusion, I really want to take my time with it. And, and it's, it's yes, yes. So then, as you say, if we go through the entire process, that we look back at the, at, is it true? And as you say, it's completely laughable. laughable. It's like, oh my, my God, how asleep was I just, just 10 or 15 minutes ago? So it, it's um, for people in a hurry. <laughs> and then I was one of those. <coughs> You know, I'd like to say, if you're in a hurry, slow down. Well, let me go, let me shift us a little bit here. I, I'm interested in, well, a couple of things. Like in Zen, one of the things, you know, I notice is that people have transformation experiences, and we call them, you know, we can call them names, fancy names, but um, where 
it's like a before and after and this sort of like a figure ground shift. And I thought it was this little thing and I realized whatever that is on that yeah, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And you, the, the fourth question I think puts you into that territory actually. Um, but people have that and then you've got this question of integrate like, well, um, what do you do ne then? You know, there's some ways, so the question of embodiment becomes profound. In, in any practice, mm -hmm. and so, um, and I think in a way that, that you know, there's this curious sort of process where I'm always discovering things about myself, that my own way of teaching or being or learning, as well as other people. You know, so I'm much wiser than I was yesterday. So yeah. <laughs> <You> <laughs> <know>? <laughs> and um, and I think so. There's that ongoing process, and that that what I like long ago you said something to me that I, I don't about the, you had you had your your experiences your big experience transformation experience and then the questions were an attempt for you to both embody it this is how I understood it so I might be wrong you to embody it and also to, you know and also to communicate it but also to track like what what had kind of happened to you because yeah. you, there's just a before and an after you don't there's no middle kind of thing yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. in any trans that's what makes a transformational experience mm -hmm. you didn't notice it happening it just like it arrived so yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, it, it didn't give you any advance warning definitely a given yeah, yeah. so uh, but but then there's the oh well, what um, in a way to describe you know I think all transformational um, uh, methods or modes might be a better term like like questions or cons or whatever really also an attempt to describe reality as it is as yeah. well as to help people see reality so could you say something about that stuff? well this experience um what i love about it is it it gave me a way of inviting people into their own realization and not mine and for example, I was on the floor and and opened my eyes and there was no reference for anything. And I, I, I have attempted to describe what that's like, but um, I'm unable to, just no reference. Right. And uh, not for this, not for that. And, and then I experience and I can say in hindsight, in that moment, that, um, that the mind clicked in and immediately everything had a name and so in that it existed. So the mind hit, there were looking, there was a window and clouds and sky and there was a room and a, a bed and a floor and everything had a name. It's like the world was born in that moment. Now it could never make it true because just because you put a name on it doesn't make it so. Right, right. And that is a stop in infinite in in eternity. That can never be. Eternity is eternity and and um, the eternal, whatever you, time doesn't belong there, in the illusion of time. But I, um, you know, everything had a name. So when people, the transformation was so radical that um, people were asking me, you know, what, what did you do? And all I, I realized, and I didn't even realize. So I could see that prior to mind, there was nothing. And, and then mind hit, and there was something. So that's how the turnarounds were born. So, you know, it's a sky, is it true? And you can sit in that and experience prior to what you're thinking and believing. Really? Really? And, and then notice how you react when you believe the thought. The whole world comes into its identities born. And, um, would you be without it? You're back in the experience. And um, there's something turned around. There's nothing, which is, again, the experience. Now, it's just not something you can give, but you know, um, 
Einstein says, never stop questioning. Is that, was that it? Stephen sent, really sent that to me a couple of weeks ago. Never stop the questioning. The important thing is, the never important to stop questioning. Again? The important thing is not to stop questioning. And I go, yay! You know, and, um, and someone also said, um, an unquestioned life is not worth living. And in my experience, that's, um, that's very true. So, um, so here's, uh, where do I want to go here? Uh, oh, Let go me ahead. say just one more thing about that. Um, this is something Katie <coughs> said before, so it's not something I'm adding to the experience. But, you know, as, as we know, it, uh, experiences of awakening are not that uncommon. And, mm -hmm. and what people often find is that um, it's a, it's a peak experience that they look back on and say, you know, it, uh, everything was beautiful, et cetera, et cetera, and then somehow they lose it or lose the vividness or intensity of it, et cetera. What the questions did for Katie was provide her with a way of grounding that um, rapture, that that uh, the joy that 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 was there in its entirety and so that o o as over the next weeks and months um, she was able to be aware of any thought that would bring her out of balance outside of that sense of, of harmony and joy and in the most meticulous way so that whenever that sense of being even slightly off balance and and feeling anything less than that total joy appeared she had a way of rebalancing herself of 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 uh, experience of, of questioning that thought that was somehow felt out of her true nature and that's that's a big difference so that there was a way of um, keeping the original in intensity of the awakening experience always so that there was no, uh, no and possible and leaving. An immovable reference. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a nice way to put it. The, um, the couple of things, like in, in Zen, there's the thing about not knowing. Like, every time you step into the knowing, the world gets a bit smaller, and you can feel it in your body, you can feel it in your thoughts, and you can feel it in your distance from the world. And so, you know, there's a, you know, the famous koan, the emperor asks Bodhidharma, what's the first principle of the holy teaching? And he says, vast emptiness, nothing holy. But even that's a bit conceptual, you know. And so the emperor says, well, who are you? And he says, I don't know. And so we've moved into, into that. But that response was really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which one? The, I don't know. The, the, oh, the, the one that ended in nothing yeah. holy. Yeah, yeah, and it's true. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and holy to me <coughs> means, like, if I believe, <coughs> like, um, he doesn't care about me. If I believe that, then that becomes holy. holy that's yeah, what I'm yeah. worshiping. Yeah, and nice. Like yeah. Nothing holy. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, and that there are all these like um, putting stakes in the void, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, ten pegs into nothingness, into the ocean, or something like that. It's like, yeah. it's, a, it's like a, what's the first principle? Um, <laughs> Which, which was mm. astonishing when I, you know, for me that was really exciting to think, oh, people are talking about this stuff, and yeah. I noticed it. Another, I want to get... But I, I, I love what you said. It's, it's like, um, um, it's gone now. Yeah. yeah right. I, want, I want to hear what you're going to say next, and I interrupted it. And no, no. Well, it's, well it's, it really is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I went back to where it came from. It's only true. It's only true. It's another, there are two more ten pegs that disappeared. In the <laughs> nothing <end>. holy here. <laughs> it's nothing holy. Right. Um, well, um, the, oh, gee, it's gone. The embodiment. Well, embodiment is, is an interesting thing because there's something about creativity about when you, when you relax into what's here without telling you what it should be, something gets provided. And so this is yeah. creative, pro I think of this creative process. And so 
in that way, I think that's what the imagination is often thought of as something that um, you, know, you just made something up, but it's actually the opposite. You're listening and the world imagines something through you and, and you get to see, oh, is this, do I believe that or not? Or, yeah, and it's, or and it's taking, what images are coming here? Or something yeah. like that. And it's taking credit for what appears to come. Right, right. It's, um, it's, it's a happening. You know, we don't right. do it. It's, um, it's, it's simply there to be understood. And that's what, you know, that's what, you know, if we think we're here, that's, that's what we're here for, to notice that. And, you know, and a few questions can wake us up to well, do a lot. And so there's that quality of like, oh, if I wait, then some, it's like writing a poem, another line will be given to me, mm -hmm. or, or the universe will invent something else. And it's always, you know, invented this beautiful building room. <laughs> you know, it's invented our conversation. Mm -hmm. So, and in a way, we didn't do any of that. It's, it, it, yeah, it just it, appears, you know. It's a given, and it's, it's, it's given, and it's taken away, you know. It's, right, it's right. just kind of just, and, and, and it's not necessary to do a lot with it other than just noticing. So I, I want to link back to that, but before I go there, I want to um, I want to go into the there's a into this other quality that happens sometimes that I think in a way that all system our inquiries or our curiosity helps the universe. It helps us get out of the way of so the universe talks to us. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, naturally, you know, the mind just frees itself. You know, that, that just does happen. And, and I noticed that, like, in a way, inquiry stops me getting in the way of that freeing process, but, or cons, or do. Whereas, um, like, I remember, I was trying to think of a personal example. So, but I remember when I was a kid, I got tangled when I was about 10 or something, I got tangled with a g gang. And, and uh, beaten up, and um, I was seriously annoyed about that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Bones were broken, things like that, yeah. and um, and um, my nose is still crooked. But um, but then I remember I met one of the kids who was instrumental in in that. Um, some years later, and I noticed I didn't mind anymore, and so. And I was not a particularly interested in being peaceful sort of person, yeah. otherwise the gang wouldn't have beaten me up. <laughs> but yeah. but uh, so I had my place in it too, yeah. uh, my part in it. But, but then I thought, oh, the mind naturally, I noticed at the time I didn't feel, and I thought, should I feel, should I want to beat him up? Because now I was bigger than I could. <laughs> or I could have given him a run for his money, which I, I was too small at first. But, um, but then I realized, oh, something, there's a bigger something going on and mm -hmm. than my story about I was hurt or something like that. Yeah. And, and so that it, I, there's a way in which it just, sometimes it just does it for us, you know, that we're not in the way, we're not formed, we're not grasping at things. And I don't know if you mm -hmm. want to say anything about that. And that's, uh, Cohen, uh, Cohen's like fundamentally yeah. depend on that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, mind. Honestly, where my mind went, oddly enough, is <coughs> that you were 10, and I imagined him being 12 or, yeah, yeah. And, or, or so, and that when you met him later, um, his identity had shifted. He was no longer this high, he was this high. Right. And you had done that maturing, so yeah. you project that onto him, and it just all seemed, um, it, it would seem only right that, that you couldn't put on that guy, what you had on that guy. Right, right. Also. Right, right. right. Well, and I, know, I noticed that there's a certain, this freeing, you know, and, and you know, I, like I was thinking, trying to think of another example of like, you know, a grudge poorly kept. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, the, the, um, we, we, my father and I had a lot of conflict when I was young, and um, and there was a lot of you know stories. My mother was you know didn't had certain things against my father, which she encouraged me to support. 
and so on. But you know, he was tough, sort of hot-tempered person, and I was too, and and so on. So I had all this stuff about how these things he'd done, and he hit me sometimes and things. And I don't actually now think. Of, and then later on, when I went back and talked to him, there was that other experience of oh, um, he. I don't mind. Mm. Nothing there, and there's a kind of love, and I can see his warmth, and yeah. at least he hit me. You know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> start yeah I know. Got to start connecting. Mm -hmm. But then, after a while, then it came to not only that. It wasn't clear that he'd hit me. If, like it wasn't clear that yeah. anything had happened. Like, not only did I not, f nothing had occurred in a way. You know, mm. there's only the here, and and I think that's a. I wasn't doing anything clever with, sometimes I do clever yeah. things with my mind yeah. to bring that about, but I wasn't trying this to get was, rid of any of that. Are you, know? you describing like after Zen or before Zen? Well, after Zen, practice? but after Zen. Yeah, Although the, I think the that, thing about that, the gang was before Zen, so I think it's a natural yeah. thing. Oh, what I'm saying is that Zen might help, but, yeah. it's, oh, my goodness. but it's a natural I, thing. I, you know. I'd say it's a natural thing yeah. if you are doing Zen, if you have a, a of Zen practice. It's just a natural thing. These things have to fall off of reality. Like right, if, yeah. if, if, um, if someone um, I have a grudge against, uh, like 10 years ago, walks into the room, I'm going to see that grudge. I'm going to put that grudge on him. I mean, it's the him of my, of my past that I'm putting on him. Now, if I haven't really said in my practice, I'm not going to be aware of that. So I'm going to be weary in some way and, and more open because it's been 10 years. But if I sit in my practice, you know, if, if I've had a practice like we're fortunate enough to have, then he walks in and I, I see him brand new because I'm not putting this past future on him. And I'm witness reality, so I'm able to hear every word. I'm present. I'm listening. And I get to meet this person, not the person I believe him to be. So it's, um, and I think that that is the, the, um, the beautiful, beautiful thing about having practice. We, we know the difference between mind and reality. And it's automatic. We don't have to try. And if, you know, it's a practice, and those are the benefits. Yeah, in my experience in that particular case, like, was that, you know, in particular, I remember when my father was dying, but it happened well before that, when he was dying, there was just this swirl of sort of warmth and brightness, and he thought it was funny that he was dying. Like, we joined, <laughs> he came into that, in Conville, in a way, with me, although he had no, yeah. he made a, never read one of my books, yeah. you know, but, um, because it wasn't his way of understanding things, you know, yeah. but he understood, and we met, and, and so there was that sense of warmth, and kind of delight and he would be, pretend to be a patient when somebody came in and needed him to be dying and, and they'd leave <laughs> and, he, and we'd go back to having fun, you know, yeah. and, well, he knew he was dying. Katie had the same experience when her mother was yeah. dying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's um, in, in your presence, your father would have no hook to grab onto. He would have to move in from whatever personality that he had, and of course this is very broad the way I'm saying it. Yeah. But, I mean, what could stick to you, John? I mean, you're, it's, it's like an intention, it's like mental judo, judo? Mm -hmm. Without sure. doing judo, there's, there's no defense in it. You're just seeing, aware, and what can he do in that? What can anyone do in that? There's nothing anyone can do, there's, and, the way you see him, he would have to um, see you that way. It, it's um, it's a it's a beautiful thing, freedom, and there's no there's <laughs> there's nothing to stop it. Free is free. I, I want to ask you about another thing that is sort of interesting, really intriguing, and you bring it's in the book here, mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, where you have this. Great experience, um, which I, I've heard you talk about too, w where this woman appeared, this um, 
a vision. Yeah. But not really a vision. A woman appeared. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was a and, woman sitting and there. And she was, I think, on the end of your bed or something. Oh, she and was, she 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 was in a chair next to my bed. Wonderful reality about her. She wasn't, she was like a very ordinary kind of, yeah. frumpy kind of, yeah. had this great, substantial, loving, lovingly detailed mm -hmm. quality about her. And I'm, I'm interested, in, and I think that goes to the thing about embodiment when you really want to find out what's going on with you, like what do you really feel or mm -hmm. think, you do enter a world in which you get kind of help of some kind. Abs know? Absolutely. It's a sort of between your yeah. consciousness and it's not really out in the vastness. It's not really out in the vastness, but it's more like in the world of imagination and dreams yes. and things like that, yeah. where the way dreams will help help you because in the vastness there's nobody you might be really wise, but there isn't anybody to be wise or yeah. be wise with or something. And then, then there's this other in-between kind of world that there are Buddhist names for, you know, but um, that's kind of interesting. Uh, and, and I thought, anyway, I don't know. Yeah, I, it, I've it heard was, you speak about that it kind was, of stuff. It was time fascinated. Time. I was and I kind of like, I love that stuff. I get that stuff myself. And, you know, yeah, people come to me in dreams and tell me something and then it happens and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And, and while I don't really, I'm uncertain, that, you know, I have a not knowing attitude about it, it's kind of, there's something important about that dimension of things. So yeah, it, go ahead, it, it really I'll stop is. talking now. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> but it was um, this woman hey. sitting beside me and, and, um, and I was able to, I'm lying on the bed and then she's sitting here and then I found myself over here, so I am the woman. And then I looked over here, and I saw my husband at the time. Um, he's he's since dead, <laughs> as we say. But um, um, there, there, there was this one. Let's say there's me, and there's him. And then I'm over here. I'm this woman over here watching these two people, and. It was like looking into, like having access into a world that was so old that, that it was forgotten. It was so old. It was ancient, 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 and then beyond ancient, 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 and witnessing that. And then the compassion was, it was just witnessing these two here. The compassion was just, oh, and I wouldn't have named it that. It was just this. They don't so you're feeling understand. Her, you're feeling, yeah, 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 they just don't understand that they, they they just don't understand. And and it was like a grossness, a a, 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 a heaviness. She was a a serial. Anyway, then in a moment, I was back in this experience, lying on the bed with Paul. And I said, honey, did you see that woman? Where did she go? And he said, you know, in his beautiful way, what the hell are you talking about, Kate? <laughs> and, and I said, the, the woman, my lady. And because I was just so, it was, you know, to say bonded was, was uh, would, would be. Tell me, what did she look like? She, she, was like how, very, how she, she was is. very yeah. heavy and round and voluptuous and she was, um, she was old and she had her hair in a bun and it was, it was not great, it was still dark but she was very old and, and the compassion and the, 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 she was so far beyond beautiful, you just wouldn't put that maybe on a human body, but it was something, she was something else, she was not that. And, um, and so it was an experience that, uh, you know, when the mind is so wide open, wide open is wide open, right. and you never know what you're going to get, all kinds of phenomena, which is all that was. But it's a way of seeing that I couldn't see from here, and the mind was so open, it just shifted identities. And, and without the question, uh, without the question, John, because I experienced a lot of phenomena, and, um, and without the questions, I, um, I, let's say I didn't have the questions, I didn't know how to question what I believe, I would scare myself stuck. 
and I think a lot of people yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, they experience yeah. phenomena. There's not really yet a problem. The, yeah. There's not a problem. <laughs> yeah. And they go, whoa, oh my, oh my God, it was yeah. terrifying. You know, like I had some of those, but it wasn't terrifying for me. It was forever and ever and ever and ever kind of experience without end that was so beautiful. It, it, there was no judgment in it, and there was no choice in it. It was, and it, it was eternity and it was, and, and, and it was good and um, and but if I hadn't experienced that without the questions without a way of questioning uh, the next time my mind became vast enough open enough it would have shut down because the thoughts would be uh, oh my God, you know, this is not safe, this is too much, and um, I'm having a breakdown. And anyway, we scare ourselves out of um, um, what some would see as um, an experience that brings us um, to an understanding, in my case, really needed, really, really necessary. And of course, I... Um, I don't advocate or not advocate, but I do know that when people embody those questions, you know, in the practice, they become automatic. And um, so wherever they may find themselves, they can all, you know, take the questions with you. And it's not something that you do on purpose. They're just a part of mind that um, allow you to continue, continue, continue. And out of whatever um, world you find yourself in, like the world of I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a sister, I'm an aunt, you know, all these worlds. Well, I think we, yeah, the, the, there's an interesting thing there because I think we go in and out of those, like, it's nice to be down in the world where I'm a dad. Yes. Something like that. Yes. And then I can, like, uh, my daughter's um, sailing on a sailing ship, which is the mate or the boatswain or something other, mm. depending on, in the North Sea. And the North Sea can be gnarly. And sailing ships are old wooden things. Mm. And, um, and, but I don't, it's good. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, so in other words, I have that, oh, whatever she does is good. At the same time, I'm, you know, happy mm. to be loving her, doing what she yes. wants to do. So, uh, so I, um, there's something about not getting too frightened. Oh my God, is that? Is that safe? Yeah. So that she, kind of thing. Yeah, that's that's, and, that's, um, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful freedom. There's a way in which we we step into a kind of form and a connection and a loving quality, and then also we allow it to go where it needs to go, and that seems an important part yeah. of the whole. Yeah, the discipline it's of, it's of like um, war is war, and yeah. war is war. Yeah, you know, I love to say to argue with reality, you, you lose 100% of the time. Well, and also, well, also, that's the whole, you know, um, if you don't like war, then you don't have to dislike your dislike. You know, yeah. that's yeah. Not, not picking and choosing, maybe. I, I'm fine with not liking war. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with it. <laughs> I'm fine with not yeah. wanting, not, I'm fine yeah. with standing up to bullies and I'll take what I get, or whatever yeah. it is, you know, which yeah. might be politically important right now. <laughs> so, 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 so there, there's that. I, I remember when I f there's a koan that goes. One of the great um, old Chinese masters said, "There's nothing I dislike." And I remember when I first heard that, I thought, "Is that legal?" <laughs> sort of thing. But it seems so. Uh, wow, that's true, isn't it? You know, it's like, <laughs> and uh, and it was kind of exciting. <laughs> it was like. Huh, I thought I was obliged to dislike things without consulting myself and finding out whether I really did. Yeah, it's like being a, be. being a traitor to I know, what to makes all us my miserable. preferences and stuff and so on. And well, you know, and also, can I have that without abandoning people who are suffering or being mm -hmm. tormented or mistreated? And, yeah, it doesn't mean we be, detach, so, it's an understanding. Yeah, so the empathy is in there and it, in yeah. a certain sense is more clear and... Mm -hmm. Free, I yeah. think. Understanding is, is what I'm hearing here, and that's, you know, understanding is the power. It's, it's where everything is joined without separation, and it's, um, it's where the mind doesn't have to stop. It's free, and it's 
think, to understand everything we think, it's to understand everything we see and experience. Well, well here's, a, here's a note. I'm persecuting you with questions now. Excellent. Um, that's my job, I guess. Persecute. Uh, <laughs> um, here's another thing. Um, you, a couple of times you've told stories about where you become one with the other, and the other might be like a seagull, like you're, you're yeah, sitting on a cliff yeah, and, a seagull, and you see the seagull, or, or like a, a homeless person who walks by, you sort of trade places mm -hmm. and things like that. And, and so, first of all, I'd like, yeah, say a bit about that kind mm -hmm. of experience, because I think a lot of people have that and they don't know yeah, that it's, it's, another, it's, 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 it's actually another example. <laughs> of, it's another example of shutting, of, of the mm -hmm. ego finding ways of shutting itself down. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, this open mind um, sitting on, and, and this, this um, the phenomena stopped after about three years or so, after the experience. And, um, like that kind of thing where you become yeah, one with or into the yeah, and and so I I was sitting on a, a cliff with you know hundreds of feet below just looking at the rocks um, in the ocean and <coughs> um, and so when um, a seagull flies by their way high in the air but actually and at eye level. So um, a seagull flew by and I found myself as the seagull and I had the thought, I can't fly and you, you begin to feel that unnatural emotion and it, it, it can be like just the slightest, you might say, little spark or something, but it was met with, is it true? And so I can't fly because I am that seagull. I'm flying. I'm looking down at these rocks, and and I can't fly. Um, and then is it true? Met it, and that little spark that we would call, you know, the, the beginning of ego attachment, and you know, the that that something that does not belong in nothing, <laughs> right, right. to say it that way, and was how I reacted when I believed the thought. So rather than any kind of enemy, it, it's, it's like the signal for, you know, to, it, it's the invitation to inquiry, and then who would I be without it? And these questions are an experience when you're in the practice. It's, it's an experience and not, is it true? They're, they're not even questions, they cease to be. And, and, um, and who would I be without the thought I can't fly? It was so good, it was <laughs> so good, I can, fly. I can fly. And as soon as you love it, as soon as you love it, it it's like this in, in, in any of that phenomenon, as soon as you love it, you're back, you're back. You know, woman sitting on the cliff just Loving life party, yeah. and, and unlimited life, flying. I am. I am a seagull. I'm the rocks. I'm the ocean. I'm. I'm. I am that. I am that. I am that. So, um, but without those questions, um, and you know, I find I experience that kind of that that kind of you know that that experience and the thought, I can't fly, would. Scare me, let's say hypothetically, back into the woman on the cliff, and <clears throat> and I know not to open my mind that wide again. You know, to 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 make sure my meditations are toned down, that I'm careful, that there's some kind of thing there that keeps me from going too far. And it's it's simply, you know, as as we would say, the ego is a trickster. Yeah. And it's the ego is not bad. It's not terrible. It's an it's an unwelcome child that, um, through inquiry, I'm able invite everyone to, to, to invite, you know, everything into it so that it can be questioned and and understood. And um, that's you know that's where the the title came from. A mind at home with itself. And um, this is where the war is. 
everything else is phenomena, even this that we see as a chair or a, a, the apparent physical, even body identity. I, I like that thing about um, the way there's this natural meeting with, like there's a Zen saying about when the 10,000 things advance and meet you, that's mm. enlightenment, or it's called enlightenment, you know. It's, who cares what enlightenment is? Yeah, <laughs> it's either embodied or it's nothing. So, you know, so, <laughs> I'm, I'm, all, I'm all about the, in the, in the absence of suffering, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. Yes. Well, there's that freedom and delight thing that's being pointed to, too, you know. Um, and so, and I, I don't know, it's interesting to hear you say, oh, you had this rush of experiences and then in some way they became uh, unnecessary yeah you stopped having them and yeah, unnecessary in, in this apparent time yeah I know it's like that sort of thing comes and goes with me I mean I know that the delight of fear realizing oh I keep thinking I'm this and I'm happy or I'm sad or, yeah. and I maybe need to do inquiry on that do something uh -huh. about that but actually I'm the tree in the you, my friends, and, yeah. and the, the cup, and, the, yeah. and so on, and, and how delightful that, and then sometimes then that just is, uh, I could feel it a bit, but more of a thought, you know, more of a noticing or something yeah. like that, and other times it's full on, I was meditating the other day, and looking out the garden, and some bush, Mexican bush sage, you know, which is sort of fairly ordinary, Plant, like nondescript kind of plant, mm -hmm. it's got these pretty flowers and hummingbirds mm -hmm. like it. And suddenly, oh, I'm inside the, the flowers, you know. Mm -hmm. And sort of, I, I like it when that ha I enjoy that, and it seems part of empathy and part of how we can, you know, not, not exclude homeless people or not, you yeah, know, that sort of thing. There's yeah. just no separation in it. I am so that. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and so it seems a it's nice. It's work. unlimited. Nice work when it's we can unlimited. Get it it's only right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a fearless state of mind. It's 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 only right. It's um it's a lack of any kind of ego control. It's a safe place. It's a mind at home in itself. The um I suppose the last thing uh, that like the loop I want to do is something about I, th I think the fact you, you have a you take a statement and reverse it and you put that into your mouth yeah. is really imp important and sometimes that can do the whole thing <laughs> right? it's like it, you know it's, sort it's of, just something to contemplate um, like um, like uh, he he betrayed me or she betrayed me turned around it's, it's, it's that was such a good one Stephen, um, I betrayed him, yeah, yeah. and and it's not something. Oh yeah, I betrayed him. Da, 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 yeah, I'm guilty. It's not like that. It's I betrayed him. You, you know, it's just something to meditate on, and to become aware of all that we denied and justified and defended because that is just ego, ego, ego piling it on, and to just get still and just. Just uh, sit in. I betrayed him, and and to try it on. You know, I say it's like a new pair of shoes or a boot. You know, I betrayed him. Just try it on and and get still and and witness what's shown. And and then um, he didn't betray me. To contemplate that, try it on. And I betrayed me. You know, contemplate that. Try it on, but. But you know, over a period of twenty minutes, an hour, three days, you know, it's um, it's um. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. The um, the, there's a lot of, a lot of the, there's an inquiry element, although it's not systematic in a lot of cons and like, there's nothing I dislike. Is it? Or every day is a good day becomes a kind of inquiry rather than affirmation, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a prof then it becomes a profound statement, or, yes. or, or there's a teacher who said, somebody says, who does a lot of question and answer, a little like you actually, but somebody says, what's, what's meditation, 
He says, it's not meditation. It's not? What is it then? It's alive. Yeah. So that's where the thoughts about it keep getting yeah. opened up so the thing itself can appear. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. A lot of those things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the teaching, um, it's kind of, for some reason it's been in my mind a bit, but uh, it's one of my daughter's favorite comments actually. But So there's a teacher says, uh, so the governor comes to a teacher and says something like, um, the, um, uh, it says in a sutra that driven by unfavorable winds, the boat drifted off course towards the land of the demons, the, human, the flesh eating demons. What does it mean by that? And the teacher says, Oh, you wouldn't be able to get that, don't worry about it. And she says, No, no, I'm really interested. No, I, I just don't think you have the capacity actually to understand. And, uh, and no, no, I'm, I'm very sincere. And you know, you've wasted your life being a governor. Don't know anything about spirituality. Stop begging me. <laughs> and the guy starts to really turns red in the face and you know, has the power of life and death. And, and uh, starts thinking about uh, things like that. And the teacher, and then the teacher says, "Driven by unfavorable winds, <laughs> the boat drifted off course to the land of flesh eating demons." And the, oh, uh, <laughs> so, so that sort of embodiment is, is very much part of Cohen's. And, and I suppose the link I'm trying to make oh, yeah. is that I think that. Questions allow you to go through that process yourself and feel what it's like to yeah. be driven off course towards the land of the demons. It's, it, that is just so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are the koan. We're the yeah. answer to the koan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, does a dog have Buddha in nature or not? The answer is always something more like wolf than yes or no. <laughs> I don't know. How are we doing? So How are we doing? Do, do How are we, we doing on time? Well, you How know, are we doing for time? I think we've, we've kind of... So, how are we doing, Keith? Um, we're about 75 minutes. Okay. Oh, what do you so, think? Yeah. I think we've... <coughs> yeah, I think they, they, they wanted at least 45 and we're... Yeah, yeah I think we're well away. That was just so well, much fun as today, usual. Oh, well, is there anything more? <laughs> darling, going. darling, is there anything more to say? <laughs> darling, is there? Darling, is there? Okay. Darling's out. I, 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 um, I, what I know is, um, is I've had an amazing, amazing time, as we always do when the three of us get together. So, um, so I say it's done. Yeah, I feel. Yeah. Thank you. I feel grateful appreciative and sort of full of, I just feel <laughs> loved up. You know. so, yeah, it's like, there's Absolutely. that warm kind of bright quality, so thank yeah. you very much. What do you, what do you think? Yeah? Oh, good, all okay, right. Okay, we've done it. Thank you.